Your scent is in a room. Swiftly it overwhelms and conquers me. Jasmines, night jasmines, perfect of perfume. Heavy with dew before the dawn of day. Your face was in a mirror, I could see. You smile and vanish suddenly away, leaving behind the vestige of a tear. Sad suffering face from parting grown so dear. Night jasmine cannot bloom in this cold place. Without the street, it's wet and weird with snow. The cold new trees are tossed into and fro. Too stormy is a night for your fond face. For your low voice, too loud the wind's mad roar. But oh, your scent is here. Jasmines that grow luxurious clustered around your cottage door. Guys, this is Claude McCain's porn. Now, Claude McCain is a Jamaican writer, poet that is very much well known mainly for his porn. One of his famous poem that everyone pretty much knows about at some point in their life, it is called If We Die, If We Must Die, which was published back in 1990. It is also a poem that was a part of the, um, the opening for um, the African American Museum in DC. And it is also um, highly respected, a poem that really um, got him noticed back in the Harlem Renaissance era. He is, um, had one of the one of the highest honors you can get in Jamaica for poetry and he is also have books that I didn't know so this year I discovered him quite frankly his name did not ring a bell to me at first because I've been far removed from a lot of um, Jamaican poetry and I do have some old Jamaican poetry where his he has um, selection in um, but I didn't remember beyond the truth. It's been so many years. So when I decided to dig in, I realized, okay, yes, I know that poem. I know that poem. There are several poems about his um, that he wrote that I know. Um, but this book, however, is still new to me, and I know quite a few people, including my mother and other people who knows his poem very well, were surprised to know that he has several books. Fortunately, a lot of books weren't published till after he passed away. Um, he was a very, very um, influential person in the Harlem Renaissance. You have um, several authors who have said he influenced them, um, who were very much popular, very much um, had success in um, the writing novels. Now, I decided to... Uh, to dig more into the Harlem Renaissance era when I was trying to read more classic. If you guys know, um, as of last December of 2019, I had this kick where I wanted to read more um, classic because I realized there are so many really good classics out there that you can relate to. They're not all boring. They're not all, um, you know, not relatable. There are so many that you can learn from and so many that if you are someone who are into writing and um, all that it's good to learn learn these storytellers how they told story because the more you read classic the more you realize that your new favorites these new authors were very much influenced by a lot of these old classic books so I dig more into the Harlem Renaissance I wanted to read more there's about 20 something books in the Harlem Renaissance as of now but there are several that never got published but they are part of the Harlem Renaissance because that's when they were written so for Claude McCain, um, one of his books that was released this year, 2020, has a lot of controversy around it, how it got published, the, the information as far as his relationship with the publishing industry at the time, um, included um, um, literary writers who, um, publishers, I'm sorry, who, agency pretty much, who took advantage and never gave him a chance. Now, I would think a lot of times when you read this book now, it's not going to have the punch that it would have had back then because times have moved on, things have evolved, and there are better ways of telling a story now than then. And you can tell that in Romance in Marseille. Now, this is a story about a man who was having a good time in Marseille and um, took, was taken by a woman who took advantage. And in his quest to get away, he caught himself in a bad situation, and that situation caused him to have significant dam damage to his leg, and he lost his legs. 
So when he gets now to America, he is now um, influenced by someone that he can sue and uh, make money for being wrongfully imprisoned on a ship that caused him t to lose his leg. And so there's a spiral of the, the, the people who are taking advantage and all that. But in, in general for him, he still wanted to go back. He wanted to go back to this place that he fell in love with, although there were some not so great moments. And that's the gist of the story in, in this. But what makes this book special and unfortunately should have been released back then because it would have been, I like, had a more impact, is that he had characters who are presented in a somewhat normal way. There were characters who were gay. There were characters who were prostitutes. There were, you know, different ways that he talked about them normal. There was no high drama behind these characters. They were just who they are. And it was just casually written in this story that now when you read it, it's not a big deal. Now, he didn't quite execute the ending as well in this story that I think where it, it needed a little bit more work, but then this is also his unpublished work. So we don't know what exactly he would have done had he had the opportunity to really, um, you know, get this right how he wanted to it to all go through versus someone finding his manuscript how many decades later and just decided to come up with um how they they wanted to edit it you know so this is where it, it is a little tricky but i also feel like it's really a book you should read and get your own opinion on how you want to interpret this story I think it's it's one of those um, Hall of Renaissance gems that should be read. And this was published this year, guys, 2020. And written, apparently, they believe to be the late 30s. Yeah. And the forward in this is pretty good as well. So I recommend that. So then I got to where we were doing the Caribbean Thon. And I'm like, I'm digging more for Hall of Renaissance. But I wanted Caribbean. And I was able to find two. And one of them happens to also be a Claude McCain. And this was... Emma with Big T. Now this one, I really enjoy. I think he did a good job, especially at the end. The end was yes. Now this is a story that is a sensitive topic because it has to do with um, the era of when Mussolini was trying to take over Ethiopia and which he succeeded for four years. But this is what a story that is based on um, some bit of a truth and some bit of a fiction. And in this you have a, a situation where um, these were people from Harlem that was trying to bring awareness in America of what was happening in Ethiopia. And each has good intention. There's some that not so quite good intention. There was a little bit of um, trickery happening in this as well. There was um, detail about um, um, Hesalasi's daughter um, and these other things. And of course, back then, if you think of the era of what women's role were, there's a lot of that who wants who and who's looking for who to, to um, have a certain status and certain uh, ring on their finger. So that happened in this as well. There's several different characters in this that is very interesting and well done that I was very entertained by. Uh, but it also has so much in this where you're not sure what was actually real and false because Claude McCain actually did work with several people during that era and during that um, situation that was happening. So with that, you kind of like um, have those moments where I'm like, you're wondering how much of this is, you know, did is really fiction and, and, and actually did happen. Um, it also, there is political talks in this and um, history wise, it, it, it is believed that Claude McCain um, may have his um, views of politics that are not favorable or weren't um, liked back then. And that might have contributed to a lot of his, um, his situation. Now, this book did get published also in the 2000, I think it was 2015. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. 17, actually. So, this is another one that was sitting there for a while. Now, what we know so far about these two is that there were several copies that were floating around in the industry back, you know, how many decades ago, uh, but never quite was um, in the hands of, like, a regular reader. Um, so... 
it's it's interesting how how these um play out in terms of who had their hands on it and how much of this is the final final or the last bits of what he wanted to say um this the forward in this one was amazing because it really dig in and give you a lot of rundown of um the story behind the story you know that deal and also sadly how he was treated in the, in the published industry you get a lot of information about that in this as well and what really saddened me too is he died broke so, you know, these books are being sold now, you know, he's getting more recognition as the years go by, but he's never reaped the benefit of his work. Um, you know, his poetry is well loved and, and everywhere, but he died a very broke man. He died with nothing. And so it makes his story so bittersweet where you, you appreciate his work, but then you feel how, you know, you feel sad that he never got to to enjoy his the benefit of his writing. He is an experimental writer, um, so sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But I appreciate authors who take risks, especially in a time period where people weren't doing that. Um, a lot of times, people don't really um, talk about his sexuality. He is considered a, a bisexual man, and um, I don't think a lot of people knew that um, outside of his circle. Um, but back. Then, then there was a lot of writers and artists in that circle who were bisexual and people really didn't know that um you know a lot of those Hall of Renaissance um writers were you know um but it's it's still um it's a, a, a topic with him that is I don't think a lot of um people in Jamaica even know but I love his writing style um I think he is a, a, an interesting um, writer and I'm going to continue to explore him, especially right now I have um, Banjo. I never read this one. This one is definitely going to be on my um, my list for 2021. And this is, um, I believe, about some singer putting a group together and all the shenanigans that happened. Now this one I believe was published while he was still alive. Let's see what the publishing date on this is. Um, yes. So this was published um, back in uh, 1929. Um, so he he was able to, um, to publish this while he was still alive. So this one I'm definitely going to read because this is his full writing. This is him writing to the end, not someone trying to interpret. Um, and this is a raw copy because the font is still um, close to the original. So this hasn't been edited that much. Because um, sometimes with classics, it gets edited like 30 times before you read it. You know, you get to read it. And this one, the last edit was done in um, 1957. So this, you know, it's very close to a finished copy of his mind <laughs> what he created so yeah um but yeah i'm going to um end this here and just let you guys know that um there are some caribbean classics out there and um and this is one that if you are interested in some caribbean classic to pick up claude mccain's and yeah so i'm gonna end this here and thanks for watching guys and have a good day bye